Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and this is going to be a very quick video today because my throat is killing me. I've got a cold, it is not going to last long, so let's just jump right in. What we're talking about today is the Firox game engine. This is one of the two big uh, Rust-powered game engines out there, in my opinion. This one is kind of claimed to fame as that it's got a very Unity-esque editor, so it's being built out editor first, where the other option out there, Bevy, is being more of a, a framework that is going to build an editor eventually. So if you want to have like a Unity-type experience, but you want to use Rust, as your programming language, Firox may be an interesting one for you. In terms of the feature set, you see here, again, editor, uh, PBR renderer, advanced user interface, plugins and scripting, it's got hot reloading, high quality audio, advanced animations, scene graph, first class 2D and 3D support, physics, multi-platform, including PC, various different Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, as well as web. So if you want console, by the way, you are out of luck. Now, if you're wondering, this here is the Firox editor in action, gives you an idea of what it looks like. It can be used to create 2D games, Games, as well as 3D games, as you can see, we're obviously doing 3D with our 2D here. Got animated sprite support and so on. Uh, again, it's it's a pretty comfortable editor. Sometimes there's a little bit of klutziness around the UI, uh, especially because they've rolled their own instead of doing like native file dialogues, that kind of stuff. But in terms of why we were talking about today, well, there was just an update to the Firox game engine, and it's uh, what they call the biggest one yet. So we've got Firox Engine 0 0.36, and it says, I'm happy to announce Firox has been released, is a modern game engine written in Rust, helps to create 2D and 3D games with low effort using a native editor. It is like Unity, but in Rust. This release is the largest in history of the engine so far, includes major rendering improvements, feature-rich tile maps, UI styling support, project manager, nine patch improvements, collider shape editing, terrain improvements, animation improvements, particle system improvements, huge amount of bug fixes, and a lot more. So that is what is here. When you first fire it up, you get this uh, project manager. Uh, it is a new part of the engine. It basically allows you to have multiple different installs. You know, if you use Godot, you know what the project list is all like. Or on Unity, you've got the Unity Hub. Uh, Epic has the much loved Epic's game launcher. They have their own project manager that you get when you first launch it. Now, uh, they have added tile mapping support. Uh, so obviously this is a popular thing for creating 2D games. It is a way of using like an atlas of sprites that you basically paint or draw on the screen. A lot of details about what is supported there, including things such as uh, sequences of animation. So if you want to have animated tiles, you can do so. Uh, on top of that, they did have the ability now to do UI styling. Uh, so you can define how you wish things to work. An example of that is done right here. They've also improved their fonts. And this is one of the things that I found very annoying about earlier versions of Firox. So with 0.36, it fixed the blurry fonts and it works well with high DPI screens. So fonts are now support kerning, uh, which makes the fonts look uh, as it was meant to look like. We now have a shape editor available for colliders. So you can see here this, uh, uh, blah, my brain's not working, um, cylindrical shape around this uh, fire barrel, for example, here. Uh, they've got uh, the graphic server has been abstracted away. So it used to be tied directly to OpenGL. Now they have an abstract layer in the middle uh, so they can have other APIs as Vulkan, DirectX, et cetera. Uh, so changing the render in a project with 250,000 lines of code is a huge task and this release of the engine still uses OpenGL-based graphic server. It will be changed closer to the release of Firefox 1.0, but now you have that abstraction in between. They also did some refactoring of how the render itself worked, um, improvements to uniform buffers and materials. Uh, on top of that, they updated the asset browser, the abilities to uh, duplicate existing resources, as well as a refresh button. So like I said, some of the UI can be a little clunky at times, but there have been some UI refinements in this particular release. Um, asset browser also has, again, there is that refresh button available right there. When you've got things going on, it also shows folders now uh, in the current directory. Nine patch, we're improved. Nine patch is a way of slicing up a sprite so you can scale it up almost infinitely. Um, so significant improvements. First of all, there's no need to implicitly set UVs and margins at the same time. All that is set uh, all that is needed to set the margins and everything else will be calculated on the fly for you. Next major improvement is support for custom texture regions, which is crucial for interfaces that use atlases with multiple UI elements. Um, and then there is a new texture slice editor available for uh, dealing with nine slices. Uh, and then on top of that, they have improvements to their train system, including now the ability to cut holes into a train. So if you want to have a cave, for example, there is now a mechanism. Uh, it is not only visual, it affects the physics. So if you cut a hole and a physical object falls into that hole, that object will fall. As so you can see, the results right there. Uh, they added experimental occlusion culling in this release, also updated their particle system so that you can now specify uh, how generated particles will be. They'll either be local or world space for their coordinates. 
Uh, next improvement in particle system is configura configurable visibility distance. You see as it moves away, no particles. As you get up, kind of goes along with occlusion coloring for performance aspects. Uh, return early macros were added in. Improvements to the curve editor is now possible to copy and paste selections. There's also a new ability to add keys on multiple curves at once. Hot key for fit, uh, zoom to fit was also added, F. Um, editor UI statistics panel, you can see down here. So you can pop that up and see uh, how much um, memory is being used and so on. Some changes to the texturing file browser was improved for this release. Uh, adds a home desktop directory shortcut. Again, I find the file system, I wish they just use native. I really do. These, these whole, roll your own cross-platform file browsers are always kind of annoying to work with, but they've resolved them a little bit and a number of other improvements in here as well. I'm definitely glossing over things a little bit, quite frankly, because my voice is about to give up. So that gives you an idea of what is in here. Uh, there is, again, these are smaller or more um, complete change notes here. A lot of small things done in there as well. But that is Firerox 0.36. If you're interested in learning more, the cool thing here is they actually have a book that will get you up and running with Firerox. So if you want to learn how to use Firerox, there is documentation to get you up and going. I do believe they update it with each release for the most part too. So this documentation should stay more or less up to date. So you see here, if you want to learn how to use sprites, for example, the sprite is documented, code, uh, all examples are in there as well. Uh, and then another chapter specifically, for example, on sprite animation. So it is a well-documented uh, game engine with a decent number of tools out there. On top of that, the project that you saw in action earlier on, that is the platform example. There are a number of samples to get you up and going with this one. Uh, by the way, it's all released under the MIT license. Firox itself is an open source project, and it is also released under an MIT license. So if you're looking to use the Rust programming language, but you want something that is somewhat Unity-esque, well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Firerox game engine. Again, some of the, the UI definitely has that roll your own symptoms, but each one of these releases, they do seem to be making that a little bit better with each release. So uh, that's all the, dev the coverage I'm gonna do today. Again, voice is giving out on me. Hopefully that was interesting to you. Firerox 0.36, now available, as they claim their biggest release ever. All right, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.